Hi folks, this is Calc 1, Checkpoint Quiz 1. In number 1, we're given a table of data. And what we have here is we have values of x, and then the accompanying values of f of x. So when I plug x equals negative 0 0.1 into the function, I'm getting out 0 0.9, and so on. Part A. What appears to be the limit as x goes to 0 from the left of f of x. So what does it mean for x to go to 0 from the left? It means I'm plugging in things a little bit smaller than 0. So as I look at these uh, data points here, negative 0 0.1, negative 0 0.01, negative 0 0.001, these are the points that are approaching 0 from the left. And so what I'm asking for here is what appears to be the pattern in the values of f of x. So as I look at the values of f of x, I've got 0 0.9, 0 0.99, 0 0.999. And so it appears as if the function values f of x are getting closer and closer to 1. Now, this just appears to be the limit. We have no idea if this is the actual limit because we've only sampled three points. Part B now, what appears to be the limit as x approaches 0 from the right? So now we want to plug in numbers a little bit bigger than 0. That's these guys. So these are the numbers as uh, x approaching 0 from the right, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001. What appears to be the pattern in the f of x? Well, as x gets closer to 0 from the right, the f of x values appear to get closer to 2. And so it appears that the limit, as x approaches 0 from the right, of f of x is 2. Does it appear as if the limit, as x approaches 0, of f of x exists? So we don't have a plus or minus down here. That means that we need to look at what's happening from both directions. Well, from the left, it's getting closer to 1. And from the right, it's getting closer to 2. In order for the limit to exist, it has to approach the same number from both sides. So the answer is no, since as x goes to 0 from the left, f of x appears to go to 1. And as x goes to 0 from the right, f of x appears to go to 2. But once again, this is based purely on these few data points. Number two, we're asked to sketch the graph of a function whose limit as you approach three does not exist. Now there are lots of different ways for a limit to fail to exist. So you only have to draw one, but I'll draw a couple. Here's x equals three. One thing that could happen is we have a jump at three. So the limit does not exist here because as I'm coming in from one direction and coming in from the other direction, I'm getting close to two different y values. So that's one possibility. Another possibility we've talked about in class is a vertical asymptote. So we could have a vertical asymptote there. Say something like that. Now we've talked about the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x in this case actually being infinity but remember infinity is not a real number when we write that the limit is infinity we're just describing how the fun how the limit is failing to exist it's, it's failing to exist in a certain kind of way we've also talked about and we've seen an example of this of infinite oscillation infinite oscillation is kinda tough to draw but, you know, certainly something like that would indicate uh, a limit failing to exist because it just oscillates too much. But you really can't draw infinitely many oscillations. So you would, you know, wanted to do this, you'd have to say, you'd have to actually write it down. If I could remember how to spell infinite. Oscillations.
and the infinite oscillations have to have sort of the same amplitude there for the limit not to exist. Or, and this is sort of a very technical note, but we certainly could do this as well. Why doesn't the function, or why doesn't the limit exist at 3 here? Well, the answer is, as you're coming in from the left, there's no graph, which means the function is not defined, and hence the limit is not defined. So an example of this kind of behavior would be a function such as, say, square root of uh, x minus 3 plus 1. That might be the graph of that. And as x is less than 3, it's undefined, so the limit by default doesn't exist. So those are a few different ways, a few different answers to number 2. Okay, for number 3, we're given the graph of a function, y equals f of x, and we're asked to find some limits of it. And I was negligent here. I should have labeled these tick marks so we know it's 1, 2, 3, etc. So I'll just put those in now. Number one, we're asked to find the limit as x approaches zero of f of x. Since we haven't specified left or right there with a plus or a minus, we're looking at x as coming into zero from both directions. Now, we're looking at the trend of the f of x values. And on the graph, the f of x values are the y values. So let's look up on the curve uh, where, these, where the points on the curve are going. So if I... I do that, I'm traveling up the curve, and so what's happening to those y values? Those y values are heading up to y equals 3. And so for part A, the limit then is 3. Part B, we're looking for the limit as x approaches 1. So once again, Here's uh, x equals 1 coming in from the left, coming in from the right. I go up to the graph and see what's happening there. And I'm looking at where the y values are going. So as I'm coming in this way, the y values are heading down this way. And I'm heading in this way, the y values are heading up that way. So from both directions, these y values seem to be getting closer and closer to 2. And so we'll say that limit is 2. Now notice there's a hole in the graph at x equals 1, and that's okay. The limit doesn't care what's actually happening at 1. It just care, cares what's happening near 1. Okay, parts C and D, I've just recopied them up here so we have the graph in plain view. Part C asks us to look at the limit of the function as x approaches negative 2 from the right. So here's negative 1, there's negative 2. We're approaching negative 2 from the right. We're plugging in numbers a little bit bigger than negative 2. And what's happening with uh, on the curve? So on the curve, I'm heading downwards. And if I just look at what those y values are doing over here on the y-axis, they're heading downwards to this point, which is negative 1. So as x goes to negative 2 from the right, f of x goes to negative 1. Part D. Part D, I don't have a plus or minus. I'm looking at x approaching negative 2. That means from both directions. Well, from the right, I know the uh, function values are heading to negative 1. What's happening as I come in from the left? Well, there's no graph. That means that the function is undefined for x less than negative 2, which means the limit is undefined as well. So the answer here is this does not exist. since the function f is not defined for x less than negative 2. That'll do it for checkpoint 1.